Good morning, folks. A lot to cover today as we're going to hit the climate, cosmology, catastrophe. We'll get a satellite look at Hurricane Laura's landfall, and we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day brings the coronal holes through central longitudes. With the active regions quiet, we do have small filament activity to watch, and we look ahead to the solar wind impact from that coronal hole this weekend. Solar wind right now isn't exactly silent, though. Variability of the caboose stream instabilities of the previous coronal hole output here, it's still barely out of normal range, so bottom right, the KP index remains all in the green. Let's peek in on a little comet furiously tossing out gas as it tries to get to the sun before it's gone. We'll monitor its approach and likely destruction today should make an appearance on C2 tonight as well. Up next, we're at Hurricane Laura. Folks, there isn't much in the way of detail yet here before sunrise, but we can tell that the eye was maintained through landfall. It is still a hurricane-level storm. This is the geo color overlay and the lightning detector running together here from GO-16. I'm sure those details will come in throughout the day. Let's get to cosmology, the foundation. More constraints on axions, the polite academic way of saying they found nothing. Given the magnetar science on their books right now, the observation should have easily supported their existence, if they existed. Deeper into that vein, we're looking at gamma returns on the galactic plane. We find one of the last hopes for wimp dark matter fade away as the excess radiation in the core of the Milky Way fits no dark matter annihilation scenarios. Up next, who knows what this is? I will be shocked if you get it right and didn't read the article already. I wouldn't be able to guess it correctly, and the aesthetic shot of the day is actually a zoom in on a crystal simulated to be the subject of a meteor impact shock. Turns out the planes within the crystal reflect the energy, somehow creating orbit-like rings of material mutation concentrically from the center. Pretty incredible. Now we get back to the science with a double scoop of ice cream here. Not only do they adequately characterize how atrocious the last great extinction event was during the Younger Dryas Cold Period and the Gothenburg Magnetic Excursion, but the trends in pollen they get from the cores suggest we are back on that exact path there now. Taking a look in that direction from the oceanic perspective, we are seeing even more discourse about the rapid rate of cold freshwater melt and overall Arctic warming. Now, not only does this counterintuitively lead to ocean heat transport shutdowns and the onset of the next ice age, but the unbalancingly preposterous heating at the North Pole compared to the entire rest of the world is not about global warming which wouldn't even make sense. It should be where the CO2 concentrates or under that ozone hole region in Antarctica. Nope, it's up north, where the Earth's magnetic field lets in particles at the polar cusp, where the next catastrophe, the ongoing magnetic excursion, is letting in the most energy. Speaking of the last ice age, let's see what Earth's natural variability does have in store. It's basically a confirmation that global cooling of 6 degrees C or 11 degrees Fahrenheit compared to today was the norm, with the higher latitudes seeing up to 25 degrees Fahrenheit change. This should obviously, hopefully, put the degree or so of global warming that we have now into perspective as being absolutely nothing. We'd have to burn everything on the surface to overcome a drop in temperature like that, and the sun speaketh from the back of the room. That's my job. Last but not least, cosmic rays are going to start stymieing quantum computing. You don't say. That's an understatement. If everything stayed as such today, they would soon hit a wall due to cosmic ray impacts and even things like radiation from concrete. And as the modern cosmic ray maximum develops, we're going to see those walls close in. Cosmic rays are from the galaxy or even outside the galaxy. They are high energy particles, atomic nuclei like hydrogen, iron, carbon, except they've had their electrons stripped away and carry a positive charge. When these hit every square meter of the atmosphere every second, they produce cascades of neutrons, protons, electrons, gamma rays, and more. And this is the electromagnetic space energy soup in which we have lived every day of our lives. A little check-in on that, by the way, at Mexico City Station, showing our having met the previous modern record and spending an extra stretch at that peak. The maximum reached at the end of the last sunspot minimum was indeed the highest on record and thought to be the highest since before the grand solar maximum of the 1900s, likely since the Maunder minimum centuries ago. And we have indeed reached those high levels again and have managed more time in that territory. This is confirmed at a number of stations worldwide with the rest showing us about to be there soon. 
With the sun heading for grand solar minimum in as little as 10 years, it's a cold alternative if we do manage to get through the sunspot cycle without a major field hit or grid collapse. Cosmic rays began to assault everything from technology to atmospheric electricity to cardiac rhythms to silica-rich magma. This is where the terrible cosmic coincidence of the ongoing magnetic shift of the entire solar system meets the weakening stellar output after grand maximum century as the cosmic rays continue to climb and the magnetic field continues to fall. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about everything I just said and more with the free buffet of videos at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.